everybody, Dieter Kurtenbach here in Oakland. Warriors lose another one. 0 for 3 on the Texas road trip, falling to the San Antonio Spurs 104 to 92. And this one um, was not good. It was all around bad. Uh, another poor down the stretch performance from Kevin Durant and Clay Thompson. Warriors get it pretty close. They got it to within one late in the fourth quarter, but San Antonio pulls away. Just too consistent, too competent. That's a great Popovich team. You do not expect them to shoot themselves in the foot, and they did not. Meanwhile, the Warriors looked all sorts of out of sorts again. Let's get to the big three from tonight's game. Number one, Clay Thompson needs to find his three-point shooting stroke. That is a weird sentence to say. Clay Thompson, the second greatest three-point shooter of all time, in my opinion, uh, is shooting 25% from three, 26% to be exact, outside of that one game against Chicago, who I'm not entirely convinced is a real NBA team. Clay Thompson was off again tonight, and the Warriors desperately need him. With no Stephen Curry and no Draymond Green, not that Draymond Green shooting any threes or that you want him shooting any threes, but he creates, he draws attention on the defense, he's a playmaker. Without two of your best playmakers, without the greatest three-point shooter of all time, and with Kevin Durant seemingly wanting to live in the mid-range, Klay Thompson has to knock down the threes that he is getting, and he simply did not against the Spurs. He did not this entire road trip, and that is a big reason why the Warriors have lost three straight. Number two, I liked, I'm going to go with the positives. I liked what Quinn Cook gave the Warriors off the bench. No question about that. I liked what Jonas Jerebko was able to give the Warriors. Again, two straight games, good games for Jonas Jerebko. And frankly, this entire season has been really good for Jonas Jerebko. I like what Kevon Looney did. I like what Damian Jones did. I liked what Damian Lee did a little bit. Not as much playing time as he got in Dallas, but he was solid nevertheless. There were some positives on this team, but this is ultimately how the other half, or 29 teams, if we're being honest, of the NBA live. It's just you need your superstars to perform on a night-in, night-out basis, and three-point variance is a big arbiter in who wins and loses games. This is not something the Warriors have really ever had to deal with. If Steph Curry's not on one night, Kevin Durant is usually on. If they're not on, Klay Thompson's usually on. And then they have Draymond Green, one of the greatest defenders of all time, and just a pure winner. You have those, those four guys... The other guys, they can. there's no pressure on them. There's no pressure on a guy like Andre Guadalla. There's no pressure on a guy like Sean Livingston. Quinn Cook, there might be a little pressure on him that he has to get up some shots when he's on the court, but ultimately it makes everything easier for everybody. And what we're seeing without Stephen Curry on the court for the Warriors is a verveless offense. This is it, They are really just grinding their gears on that side of the court. And without Draymond Green, a lot of cuts to the basket by the other team. That switching defense just doesn't work the same. It's still solid. There were positives to be found. Don't get me wrong. It's not as if the Warriors are a horrific team. But without Draymond Green, it's just obvious what he brings to that defense, and the Warriors just simply cannot replicate it. They look rough without those two guys. Now, luckily, they don't have to worry about that. Uh, Curry's coming back. Draymond's coming back. Don't know when, but they're coming back at some point. So it's not as if the Warriors are completely underwater and that they're not going to make the playoffs or anything like that. But third thing, they're not the number one seed in the Western Conference anymore. They'll probably get there, but you have a lot of other teams that are starting to rate their ships. Houston's back above 500. I think Utah's playing good basketball. There are a lot of teams right there, but Portland is your number one seed. And guess who comes to town this week? Friday night, Portland. Wednesday, Oklahoma City Thunder. These are tough games. And the Warriors do not look like a team that can even come close to playing with those teams right now. And this is a team, again, that still has Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson. Kevin Durant's thinking about hightailing out of town. He might have to take into consideration what a team built around him would look like with only maybe one other star, a guy like Klay Thompson, who will get a max contract this upcoming offseason. It is an ugly picture, and, and ultimately the thing that I keep coming back to is this is how every other team in the NBA has to play. It is a grind. Night in, night out. It is tough to win in the NBA. Everyone says it around the Warriors. Everyone says it around the league. It doesn't seem true for the Warriors because they don't make it look hard. And yet, what we're seeing these last couple of games, it is absolutely difficult when you don't have a guy like Stephen Curry. There is no joy out there to be found. Warriors get back to it. They get a couple of days to get right, if they can even get right. Maybe Stephen Curry comes back. No. Um, he's expected out for another couple of games. But... Warriors have some things they need to figure out. Oklahoma City comes to town on Wednesday. Road games are tough in the NBA, but when you're playing like this, home games are tough too. Warriors, Thunder, Wednesday. We'll talk then.